Hello my friends, I'm Clover and today we're solving Dots and Crosses by Philip Newman. This was originally posted in GAS on July 17th, 2024. And this appears to be a diagonal Kropke pair Sudoku. So what does that mean? So first of all, we have normal Sudoku rules. So replacing the digits one through nine, once each in each row, each column and each outline three by three region. Then we also have two marked diagonals in the grid, and along each of these blue marked diagonals, digits can't repeat. So for instance, this diagonal here that I'm highlighting has to contain the digits one through nine, one time each. Then there are also some black and white dots in the grid. Digits that are separated by a black dot have to be in a one to two ratio. In other words, one of them is twice as large as the other. And digits that are separated by a white dot have to be consecutive, so one of them is one smaller or one greater than the other. Not all possible dots have necessarily been given, so there might be other pairs of digits in the grid that are in a 1 to 2 ratio or that have a difference of 1 that don't actually have a dot marking them. So let's get started. So the first thing that jumps out to me in this puzzle is that I have only odd digits here, and I have a lot of them. So the remaining digits in this region are going to be 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. I was hoping that that would give me um, some kind of revelation about this particular dot. I don't think it's actually going to, though, so I'm just going to leave that pencil marked for a moment. And I'm going to look at some of these dots that actually have a digit placed on them already. So 8 is only in a 1 to 2 ratio with 4. 4 could be in a 1 to 2 ratio with either 2 or 8, but because there's an 8 in the row already, I'm going to have to place a 2 there. 6 is in a 1 to 2 ratio with only 3. 2 is in that ratio with either 1 or 4. 2 is twice as big as 1, 4 is twice as big as 2, but because there is a 4 in the column, I have to place a 1 here. So that lets me eliminate 2 and 3 from these cells on the diagonal, since they can't repeat. And so I can eliminate 4, 6, and 8 from these cells and make this a 2, 3 pair, which is a lot nicer looking than what I had before. I can also eliminate a 4 here because there's a 4 on this negative diagonal. Okay, let's look at some of these other black dots. So I can't use a 1 and I can't use a 2 here. So this needs to be either 3 and 6 or 4 and 8 with the 4 going in the left position. I don't know which of those we're working with yet, though. This can't use a 2 or a 4, so it can actually only be a 3-6 pair. That's going to be kind of useful, because 4 is consecutive only with 3 or 5, and because we've already used a 3 as part of this 3-6 pair, we have to place a 5 there. Here I can't use 4 or 8, so this has to be a 1-2 pair or a 3-6 pair. However, it can't be a 3-6 pair at all because I can't put the digit 3 or the digit 6 into this particular cell. So this will have to be a 1-2 pair. Here I need a 1 and 2, a two, which is impossible because I couldn't put anything in this cell, a 2 and 4, like that, or possibly a 4 and an 8. So what has that given us? So we know that 1 is in row 1 up here, so 1 can't go in those cells, so 1 must go there. These cells are going to have to contain 7, 8, and 9. The only one of those digits that can ever go on a black dot is 8, which is in a 1 to 2 ratio with the number 4. That eliminates 4 from this cell, and now the only place for 4 in the central region is there. The diagonal, this one, is starting to look pretty full, so let's finish it. So we still need the digits 1, 7, and 9. The only one of those that's consecutive with 6 is 7. And that will make this a 9, because we can't have repeats on the diagonal. And then this will have to be a 1. Now, this diagonal, we already have 1, 2, 3, and 4. We need 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. That can't be 6, 7, or 8, because we have those three digits seeing it. This can't be 7, 8, or 9, so that could be 5 or 6. This can't be 5 or 7 or 8. And it also can't be 9, because if it was a 9, it would have to be partnered with an 8, and there's already an 8 in the region. So that's my 6, that's a 5. I'm going to place an 8 there on the diagonal. That makes this a 9 and makes this a 7, and I can fill this in to be an 8. Because I just placed an 8 there, this can no longer be a 4-8 pair, so that is a 3-6 pair. And these two digits are 4 and 5. 
This can't be an 8 because of the 8 in the row. I need a digit that's consecutive with 6. That's going to make this a 7 because there's a 5 in the region now. This will have to be a 3-9 pair. And this can't be a 6 because there's now a 6 in the row. In fact, we can also resolve all of this with Sudoku. So this can't be a 3-6 pair. It must be a 2, which goes with a 1 because there's also already a 4 in the row. I still need a 2 and an 8 to finish off row 3, so I'll do exactly that. Now, to finish this row, I need a 3 and a 6. To finish this row, I need a 5, 7, and 9, which aren't quite resolved, but they're getting pretty close. 3 is consecutive with either 2 or 4. There's a 4 in the column already, so we're going to make that a 2, which makes this a 4, 8 pair in that order, finally resolving that dot. Now here I need 2, 5, and 9. That can't be a 2, and I don't think I have anything else immediately presenting itself there, so we'll wait on that. Here I need 5, 7, and 9. That can't be a 7, because I have a 7 in the row. Interestingly, I probably wouldn't actually need this, but I'll just point it out to you guys. I have a 2, 5, 9 triple here, so my last two digits that I'm going to need in this row are 4 and 8, and I know what order those go in. That tells me this is a 9 to be consecutive with the 8, and that gives me enough to finish a large chunk of this part of the grid using classic Sudoku rules. This row still needs a 1 and a 3, so we'll place them there and there. This row still needs a 6 and a 7, so we'll place them there and there. My 2 here resolves my 1 and 2. Here I need a 1, a 2, and an 8, which will go like that. And this can't be a 1, so it's a 3, which finally resolves this 6 and 3. My two digits here should be 5 and 9. Those resolve immediately. These digits will be 4, 6, and 7. These digits in this column are going to be 1, 3, and 4. And let's finish off. So these will be 5 and 6. These will be, to finish the column, 2 and 7. That's a 7, that's, whoops, that's a 2, and we still need an 8 and a 9. And that's us done. That's how you solve Philip Newman's dots and crosses. Hope you enjoyed that one. Solve it yourself with the link in the description below this video, and I will catch you next time.